Please, Renan. Thank you very much. So, uh, uh, I want to speak about uh, abelian varieties over uh, Q square root 97 with, uh, with good reduction everywhere. And uh, before doing that, let me, uh, let me put this in a little bit in a context. So the, 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 the big theorem in this subject is uh, a theorem by Abrashkin and Fontaine. They, they proved in, the, in 85, shortly after Falting's proof of the Mordell conjecture, that there is no non-zero abelian variety over Q with, uh, with good reduction uh, everywhere. And to explain what kind of result this is, let's, let's look at the case of, uh, of elliptic curves over, over Q. So an elliptic curve has a, has a Weierstrass equation, and you can find one with coefficients in Z, and you can find the so-called minimal one, in, in the sense that it has the best properties when you reduce it modulo primes. Then this minimal Weierstrass equation has a, has a discriminant, which is a complicated expression, polynomial expression in the coefficients. And this discriminant is, is zero modulo P precisely when the, when the reduction is bad at P. So if the reduction is good everywhere, then the discriminant is not divisible by any prime, and therefore it is equal to plus or minus one. And this is a, this is a Diophantine equation. And, and the, the statement then that such elliptic curves do not exist says that this Diophantine equation doesn't have any, any solutions. And that's the kind of statement it is. It says that a, that a certain Diophantine equation, its discriminant equation, doesn't have any solution. And uh, this theorem has been generalized to not only to uh, uh, abelian varieties over Q, but also to abelian varieties over some over other number fields already by Fontaine and Abrashkin, for instance, quadratic fields. And I, I want to try to, to generalize it to real quadratic fields today. And uh, that is, uh, that is a, a, a nice family of fields because then in general the statement is false. So let me, let me explain how you can construct abelian varieties that have good reduction everywhere over real quadratic fields. So you can make them with, with modular curves. You take the, the covering x1 of delta over x0 of delta, where delta is the discriminant of a real quadratic, uh, real quadratic number field. Then there is a quadratic uh, subcover, and then you take the, that's the curve y, and you take the Jacobian of y modular and you take the quotient by the image of the Jacobian of x0 of delta. This is a, an abelian variety, and you can show that it is isogenous to a product of two conjugate abelian varieties over q square root of delta that both have uh, good reduction everywhere. So that, that, that is an example of an abelian variety with good reduction everywhere for every real, real quadratic field. But it may be that this, abelian variety is, is zero, and then, then still you, you, you may hope to prove the, the theorem again, the, the generalization of the abrashkin fontaine theorem. Okay, so now I will show you a table for the, 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 all the discriminant less than 100 of real quadratic fields. Here it is, and um, just let me, okay. So the, the, the dimension of this abelian variety A on the previous slide grows roughly linearly with A. And uh, so you, you see the here columns, columns with discriminants, and next to it, the dimension of this abelian variety A. And you see that in the first column, the dimension is always zero. And in fact, the, the little blue V that you see there means that in that case, one can prove, I have a proof, that there do not exist any abelian varieties over that real quadratic field with good reduction everywhere. The, the, the potential counterexample has, has dimension zero. However, you see in the other columns that the dimension grows, and then in fact uh, the theorem is false. But then when you see a little v, that means that that, that I can show that over that real quadratic field, the, the counterexample that I just constructed is the only one. 
apart from powers. You can, of course, if an abelian variety has good reduction everywhere and you take products, products with itself, then that abelian variety also has that property. But apart from that, it is the only example. So this, this, this then can be proved for discriminant 24, 28, 29, 33, and the other ones that have a V here. And there are two colors, so the V is blue, if you, I can really prove that, and the V is red, if I can pre prove it under the assumption of the generalized Riemann hypothesis. I should say that uh, the, the, the larger uh, uh, values of the discriminant here have been proved by Lassina Dembele. This is uh, all joint work with uh, Lassina Dembele, as you could see on the first slide. And in fact, two of the blue Vs here are also due to him. I needed the Riemann hypothesis and he was able to, to avoid it. So, so the, in all the cases where there is no V, uh, I do not know what, what happens, the, whether this abelian variety is the only one or, or not. So today I want to speak about uh, the case 97, the, the largest case. In that case, the abelian variety that, uh, that is constructed by means of this modular curve has, has dimension three. And the theorem that I want to discuss today is that that, uh, that is the only abelian variety with good reduction everywhere apart from taking uh, products with itself over Q squared of 97. And the way this is proved is by the same way uh, Abrashkin and Fontaine proved their theorem. What we do is we, we look at the torsion points of, uh, of, of, of an abelian variety with good reduction everywhere. And we show that the torsion points are, are forced to have a certain structure and, and it is, it is unique and, and therefore there is a unique abelian variety. And the torsion points uh, are points of the abelian variety and they are points of, of group schemes, of the, the group schemes of, of torsion points. And so let me talk a little bit about, about finite group schemes. So I fix a prime number P and I will look at uh, P torsion points or more generally uh, torsion points of order a power of P. So they, are, they form groups, groups of points, and they are actually the points of, uh, of group schemes, beautiful group schemes. They are finite and flat over the, over the, over the ring of integers. So the main example in, in this talk are, as I said already, P to the N torsion points of abelian varieties with good reduction everywhere. But there are also other ones. There are, for instance, uh, the roots of unity group schemes, there are constant group schemes, and the, the, the Z mod P to the NZ uh, uh, is, is the main examples. With group schemes, you can do all kinds of constructions. You can take, uh, just like groups, you can take sums, you can take sub, subgroups, you can make quotients. There is also a notion of uh, duality, uh, Cartier duality. These group schemes are dual to each other. Z mod P to the NZ is dual to, to mu, mu P N. And it is fine to think, if you are sort of uh, not used to working with group schemes, just think of the, of the Galois module of their points. So the group scheme is just uh, the points, except that it has a, yeah, an integral structure. It has, a, it has a scheme structure. And in fact, if you consider group schemes over a field rather than the ring of integers, then it is actually the same thing. The, the, the group scheme is, is completely determined by, by its Galois module of points. So the, the points together with the action of the Galois. There is also a notion of a, of a simple group scheme that is a group scheme that doesn't have any proper subgroup schemes, close sub, subgroup schemes. And you can see this on the Galois module. So that the notion of, of, of simple coincides completely with, uh, with that. So let me give you some examples. So maybe the easiest example is the, the group scheme of uh, p roots of unity. So p roots of unity are given by the equation x to the p is one. So the, the, the algebra uh, of this group scheme is, is this ring here. And the group law is just m multiplication of, of of roots of unity, so so that that's the group scheme, and it's the the, the Galois group acts on the on the on the roots. 
another example is the constant group scheme. So here you, you have a peak, you can write down an algebra where the points have p coordinates. And it looks like this. I, I will not write down what the group law is, but if you look a little bit at the equation, then you see that over a field, xi is zero or one, and, and, and therefore the, the Galois action is, is trivial. So this is another example. So the, the third example are mu2 and z mod 2. You see that mu2 is over a field plus or minus one, and z mod 2 is, is, is constant. It is zero and one, and in both cases, the Galois action is trivial. But the group schemes are not, are not uh, the same because the, the rings are different. So this is an example where the Galois modules are, are the same but the, the scheme structure is different, that, that, that can happen. Here's another example, just, you see a group scheme, it, it's just, you have equations for the points, it's here, in this case, there are two coordinates, x and y, these are the equations, and if you solve them, then, then you, you see that over a field you have uh, four points, you see, this says that y is zero or one, and if you substitute that here, you, you, you find what, what X is. There are four points. And you can check that this fancy formula here gives an addition law. And this is an example of a group scheme of, uh, of order four. You, if you take put Y equal to zero, you get the, the formula X squared is one, and then you recover the, the a subgroup scheme, which is isomorphic to the, to the roots of unity, to, to mu2. So you have mu2 is a, is a subgroup scheme. And in fact, you can compute its quotient, with, which is z modulo 2. Is there a question? Okay. No, Rene, please okay. continue. OK, so, th so this is, uh, now you have exact sequences of group schemes, just, just as you have for, uh, for Galois modules. Here's an elliptic curve example. So if you take this elliptic curve over Q square root 41, you can compute its discriminant and you will see that it is uh, a power of the fundamental unit, epsilon. So it has good reduction everywhere. So all its torsion points sub subgroup schemes are finite and flat. So let's look at the two torsion points. There are four of them. Here you have the four points. And the Galois action is trivial, you see because epsilon is in the is in the base field is in q square root 41 and you see it, it, in elliptic curves the 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 neutral element is always at at infinity so you don't see it in this equation but a point becomes the point at infinity modulo a prime it, it reduces to the point at infinity modulo a prime if it has denominators uh, at that prime then it goes to infinity so you see that zero, zero does not reduce to infinity modulo any prime because it doesn't have any denominators. And that means that the, 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 it, it is the point of the constant group Z modulo two. So Z modulo two is a, is a subgroup scheme. And again, you can compute the quotient, which is, which is mu two. And well, it is also true that E two is, is a, you can also write it in another way as, as the product of two group schemes, which I wrote down below. And this, this is just to show you that these group schemes, they are like modules, but you know, modules, Galois modules are an abelian category and group schemes are not. And here you see uh, something that, that can happen is that you can have two filtrations with simple uh, uh, subgroup schemes, but, but that, are, that are different. Okay. Now I will, uh, my plan is to first briefly go over the proof of the, of Fontaine and Abrashkin over Q, and then use that experience to, to explain you the proof over Q square root uh, 97. So uh, in order to describe what Abrashkin and Fontaine uh, proved, uh, I introduced the, the root discriminant of a number field. So that is the discriminant, but you have to take the dth root of its absolute value, where d is the absolute degree. So that is, uh, that is a positive real number, and it is the, the root discriminant. 
And what Abrashkin and Fontaine show is that if you have an, uh, 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 a, a finite flat uh, group scheme, a P group scheme, and you adjoin its points to, to a number field, then, then well, it is known that, that, that the extension that you get then is unramified outside, uh, outside P because the, the reduction, now because it is a finite flat uh, group scheme, but it is ramified at P. And what they show is that the ramification at P is also very moderate. And this is expressed in terms of the, of the root discriminant. So, and it is especially moderate if the group scheme is killed by P. So if it is a P group scheme killed by P, for instance, P torsion points of an abelian variety with good reduction everywhere. So the statement is that then the root discriminant of this field is at most the root discriminant of the base field times this expression in, in P. For instance, if we take the base field Q and we take P equal two and we take uh, uh, let's a group. Let's take a simple two-group scheme. If it is simple, it is automatically killed by two because otherwise the two torsion would be a proper subgroup scheme. And so, if it is simple, it has to be the whole thing. Then G is killed by two. And then the theorem says that the root discriminant of the field is is at most four. So this is this is a very spectacular statement. No, it it means that if I have a uh, such a simple two-group scheme, even if the if the order is two to the million or something, if it, then still the, the the points generate an extension that is very uh, has very little ramification. It the the root discriminant is at most four. Okay, and now we 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 confront this with with Otlisko discriminant bounds. So the, the Otlisko in the oops, Otlisko in the in the 70s uh, proved certain bounds for root discriminants. So he, he showed that if the if the degree of a number field is large, then the root discriminant is necessarily also large. So he exhibited an ex, an explicit, well explicit, a, a rather complicated explicit function uh, f with the property, this function here, with the property that if the, if the degree is uh, yeah, large, then the discriminant, the root discriminant is, is, is also large. And th this function is rather uh, difficult to, to compute. So there are tables around that you can find uh, online. Here, here is one. So here you see the, the degree on the left in the first column. Let's ignore the B. Then this is the, the lower bound for the root discriminants if the field is totally real in the third column. And in the fifth column, there is the lower bound for the root discriminant if the field is complex, totally complex. So you see, for instance, that 4.5, then, then the, the, the degree, uh, if the degree of the number field is, uh, is, is five, then R6, then the root discriminant is necessarily larger than four and a half. So in, if you go back to the statement here, it means that in this example where the root discriminant is at most four, I know that the degree of that field is at most five because of the, of the bound by Odlisco. Not the, 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 the bounds in the, real, in the totally real case are even better. The, the, the worst possible case is the totally complex case. So here I repeat that again. So if F is, if the field is Q and I look at points of a simple two group scheme, then the points generate a number field of root discriminant at most four and therefore of degree at most five. So that is even more spectacular. Even if you have a group scheme of order two to the million, then its points will never generate an extension that has degree more than five. And you also know that that field is at only ramified at two. And then with a little bit of class field theory, you, you can actually show that uh, not only is the degree at most five, it must divide four because uh, there are no odd degree extensions of Q that are only ramified at two. You, you can, 
you can prove that with, with clash field theory, for instance. But then it means that the Galois group acts on the points of such a group scheme through a group of order four. So then we have a two group that acts on a two group. And then two groups that act on two groups always have fixed points. So that implies that, that the, the Galois group has a, has, has a fixed point. But it is, was simple. We said the group scheme was simple. So it, there cannot be fixed points until everything is fixed, unless everything is fixed. But then it must have order two. So we, I prove now here that the only simple two group schemes over Z are only two. It is uh, Z modulo two, the constant group scheme, and it is mu two. That follows from general results by, uh, by, by or Tate. If you know the order is, uh, is two, then, then you also know the, know the structure. Now, that implies, so the, the simple group schemes have order two, and they are those two. Just as with Galois modules, every finite two-group scheme, you can cut it in simple parts. You can, you can filter it with, with, with subgroup schemes, and, and then the successive uh, quotients all have order two, just like with, with modules. And so knowing the simple pieces tells you a lot about the structure of these two-group schemes. And what, in fact, you can do is you can use this by more or less classifying what, what these two groups two group schemes look like and you can in fact show the following you can show that they that they are they are always in an exact sequence like like this and how do you prove that well you say they admit some kind of a filtration with simple steps so i i visualize that here now so you have these are the successive sub quotients so they are in some random order a, a priori you don't know but now you, you, you can prove, and I will not go into this, it follows essentially from the fact that the class number of Q is one. You can prove that any exact sequence of this type with Z mod 2Z on the, on the left and a mu2 on the right necessarily splits. And that means that in this filtration, if you have a Z mod 2Z on the left and a mu2 on the right, then you can switch them. You can modify the filtration and, and switch them. So, and if you do that for, for all the Z mod 2 Zs and all the mu 2s that you see, then at the end of the day, you can push all the mu 2s to the left and you can push all the Z mod 2 Zs to the, to the right. So then on the left, you have an extension of uh, mu 2s and on the right, you have a successive extensions of Z mod 2 Zs. Now, the extension of Z mod 2 Zs is a tal, and then therefore it is determined by the action of the Galois group, which is unramified. But Q has no unramified extensions. Again, I use that the class number is one. So this is constant. And similarly, this extension is, is diagonalizable. So it is an ex yeah. So that is exactly this, uh, this statement here. So here it is again. I have, I have this exact sequence. This is constant and this is uh, diagonalizable. Now we apply this. Now I go back to the proof of Abrashkin and Fontaine. And I'm going to show that there cannot be an abelian variety with good reduction everywhere. So let A be an abelian variety over Q with good reduction everywhere. I take its, not its two torsion, but its two to the n torsion. So this is a finite group scheme, finite flat group scheme of order a power of two. And I apply what I just proved, that, that it fits in an exact sequence of this type with this one diagonalizable and this one constant. So I, oops, I get, I get an, a sequence like this. Uh, now, the idea is that the const, th this constant part, if I reduce it modulo a prime, it, it remains constant. And it, I, get, I get constant groups. In, I mean, the Galois order, the Galois action is trivial and the points do not go to zero when I reduce them. So constant group schemes give me points also modulo p, rational points. And the idea is now that over a finite field, an abelian variety cannot have too many rational points. And, and, but the problem is, it may be that this one is trivial, 
and everything is here. So then the constant part is, is very small and I cannot use this argument because all the points are, are here. In order to get around this, I take the dual of this sequence. So the sequence flips around and the, the dual now of the constant becomes diagonalizable. The dual of the diagonalizable becomes constant and the group in the middle, the Cartier dual of the two to the n torsion points of A are exactly the two to the n torsion points of the dual abelian variety. So I have a similar sequence. And now you see this can, if this is very small and n goes to becomes big, then this must be big. And therefore this must be big. So either this one is big or that one is big. And now I can make my contradiction because I take the product of these two sequences. So then I get that CN times MN dual it embeds in, in this abelian variety when I take the isogeny, I, I divide it by Mn, and here I divide it by Cn dual. So I get this, this product, the product of these two constant schemes embeds in the product of two abelian varieties. This one modulo Mn and this one modulo Cn dual. And now I get my contradiction because I know what is the cardinality of this uh, group scheme. It is the cardinality of the two to the n torsion points, which is uh, two to the power two ng. It is at most the number of points of the abelian variety over a, over a residue field. You can take any one you like. And that is since these abelian varieties are isogenous to the original abelian variety. And since isogenous abelian varieties have the same number of points, this is at most the number of points on the abelian variety over fq squared. And now I have a contradiction because this is constant. If once I fix q, this is fixed. And here is n. And this goes to infinity. So this, this, this cannot happen un unless, of course, the dimension of the abelian variety is, uh, is zero. Yeah? So this is how it, uh, how the proof, how it goes. Okay, now I go to the topic of the lecture of today, after having given you <laughs> this example, we go to square root 97. Okay, so there we have this three-dimensional abelian variety that is in the, in the modular curve, that we make with modular curves. And let's first look at this abelian variety a little bit. You can associate it to it is a Hilbert modular form. And I wrote here the Hecke eigenvalues of the of the first few coefficients, the, the, the prime ideals P are prime ideals of the ring of integers of Q square root 97, and these are the ones that have the smallest norm. And then the coefficients of the Hilbert modular form uh, are this, where alpha is uh, the zeta 9 plus zeta 9 inverse. So this already shows that the Hecke algebra, which has rank 3 over Z, must be equal to, to Z alpha. So that is uh, a PID. It is uh, the ring of integers of the real subfield of Q zeta nine. You can compute, uh, once you know the, the Hecke eigenvalues, you can compute the characteristic polynomial of uh, Frobenius for the first two, uh, for the first few prime ideals. Here they are. So they are uh, of degree six because the abelian variety has dimension three. And this is the characteristic polynomial of the of the matrix that acts on the, yeah, on the, on the, on the, on the P torsion points for every P. Okay, now I, from now on, I will call my field Q square root 97, I will call it F. And so the ring of integers is this ring. And let's look a little bit at these characteristic polynomials. And I will, I will work with two torsion points of this abelian variety. So I am interested in the action of the Galois group on the two torsion points. So the characteristic polynomial then is this polynomial taken modulo two on the two torsion points. So I ignore the first because uh, two is two. So I take another prime. And if I look at this polynomial modulo, then you see that I get t to the sixth plus t cubed plus one. And that we recognize as the nine cyclotomic polynomial. And that means that the Frobenius elements of the two primes that lie over three 
they have order nine, the, the Frobenius elements in the, in the Galois group, because the characteristic polynomial is the nine cyclotron polynomial. Similarly, if I look at this polynomial, you see it, it is the seventh <laughs> polynomial. You see, all the coefficients are odd, all the coefficients are odd, and this is the seventh cyclotomic polynomial. So the Frobenius elements of the, of the primes over 11 both have order seven. So we see that the image of the Galois group acting on the two torsion points contains elements of order seven and order nine. And now uh, I claim that actually the image of the Galois group is SL2F8. So why is that? Well, the Galois action must commute with the action of the Hecke algebra. The Hecke action is defined over, over And the, therefore it commutes with T modulo two. But you remember what T is, T is Z alpha, where alpha is this. The prime two is inert in this, uh, this number field. And therefore T modulo two is a field of eight, with eight elements. And therefore, the, 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 the action must commute with this F8 action. And be it, so it has to commute with, with, yeah, with F8. And it, therefore, it is contained in GL2 F8. On the other hand, the determinant is always one, because the determinant is equal to, to of a Frobenius element, is the prime times the character value, which is plus or minus one of the quadratic character. So it is always one modulo two. So in fact, the image of the Galois group is in SL2F8. So it is a subgroup of SL2F8. Now SL2F8, we know what the maximal subgroups are. They are either uh, Borel or Cartan or split Cartan or non-split Cartan. But none of these group, some of these groups contain elements of order seven and some of them contain elements of order nine, but never both. The only group that contains both elements of order seven and elements of order nine is SL2F8 itself. So the image of the Galois group, just by looking at these few polynomials, is equal to SL2F8. This is a simple group, order 504, and it is an AC group, it, actually well known in group theory. That it has the property that the centralizer of every any non-trivial element is, is abelian. Okay, now what I will, uh, yeah, what this implies also is that A2 is simple because SL2F8 uh, acts transitively on the, on, the, on, the, on the 64 points on, <laughs> apart from zero and therefore the, the, the Galois action is irreducible and that implies that A2 is a, is a simple simple two-group scheme over OF. And remember how the proof went over Q. Over Q, the, in the abrashkin fontaine case, there were only two simple group schemes. There was Z-mod 2 and Mu2. And then I had an argument with, with those to finish the proof. So now the, the, it's different. There is this fancy uh, simple two-group scheme. And it is not even the only one. There are also a few of order two that is that is also Z mod 2Z, and that is mu2, those you always have over any, any ring. But there are also two other group schemes of order two. I call them G pi and G pi prime, where pi and pi prime are factors of two. The, the prime two splits in Q square root 97. It is a product of two uh, principal ideals generated by pi and pi prime. And there are two group schemes of order two, uh, and they are sort of mixed. G pi is mu2 locally in pi, while it is z mod2 locally in pi prime. And for G pi prime, it is the other way around. So you have these four group schemes of order two and this fancy monster of, uh, of order 64. And now the theorem is, so I, it is more complicated than over Q. There are now five simple two group schemes. Instead of mu2 and z mod2, you have all those. Well, still, you survive. Uh, the, once you know this, you, you can argue uh, in, a, in a similar way and prove that, that there, are, there cannot be any abelian varieties with good reduction everywhere except A. 
and the proof is more or less the same. You look at the two to the n portion points of the abelian variety, arguing as I did in the fontana brashkin case, you prove that the order two group schemes, they cannot sit in an abelian variety because you would have too many torsion points over finite fields, that's impossible. So the, the, the group schemes of two to the n torsion points, if you filter them with simple steps, all the simple steps are isomorphic to A2. So it is A2, 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 A2. And now the question is, how can you glue these A2s together and make A2 to the n? And that has to do with the question, this, how many extensions are there? And there is, of course, one, there is A4. This is an exact sequence. And you prove that it is the only one. That, that is a, an, an argument that I will skip. You prove this is the only one. And once you know that, then it is a formal to prove that in fact, uh, you, can only, you can only get A2 to the, uh, I mean, the only finite flat group schemes that sit in the abelian variety are isomorphic to A to the 2n. And then you, you, you use uh, Falting's isogeny theorem and prove that the abelian variety is isogenous to a power of n. So that, that, that I, will, uh, I will skip. So the, 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 the question now is to prove theorem two, to prove that the only simple two group schemes are those five. Okay. Now, remember how we did that in over Q? Remember, we used Odlisco. So that we're gonna do the same. So we, 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 we take the simple two group scheme, we adjoin its points to, to, to our field, and we get an extension. And Otlisko tells us that there is a bound on the root discriminant. And this, in this case, the bound is four square root 97. And that is a, about 39. And then you look in Otlisko's tables and then you find a bound on the, on the degree. Remember over Q, the bound on the degree was five. And we could control that. And, and this time the bound is uh, almost half a million. So that is, uh, that is what happens when you uh, collaborate with uh, Lacina, I guess, then you get these huge bounds. And uh, uh, how, so it was rather easy over Q to control this, uh, this field that had degree at most five and is only ramified at two. Now the, the bound is much larger. And uh, yeah, I, I think I will, I will skip this. So the, I want to control uh, number fields that, 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 have, uh, that are extensions of Q square root 97 and are unramified outside two and have root discriminant at most this. And basically I look at the maximal possible such number field and you, you cannot really phrase that in terms of the root discriminant, but in terms of some ramification index, which, which I, will, uh, I, will, I will ignore for now. So I look at the maximal extension of the field Q square root 97, for which a certain ramification index satisfies this. And this is in fact what Abrashkin and Fontaine proved, and it implies that the root discriminant is at most this, but this behaves better. Now, what we do is, is the following. We, we first co compute the maximal solvable sub-extension in this field. And th this is done with class field theory. And we find that this is a field uh, K prime of, and it has degree eight, here it is. Now, but we know another subfield of this field K double prime, because we have our abelian variety of dimension three. And we know that if we join the two torsion points of that abelian variety, uh, two Q square root 97, then we get an extension with Galois group SL2F8. So we adjoin also those points to our, to our fields. And then these, these are disjoint field extensions because this is a solvable extension and the, the group SL2F8 is simple. And we get this huge extension inside our field. So this is F a degree eight extension and a degree 504 extension. And now we can estimate what is the degree of the piece that is left. So that is at most, well, half a million divided by this degree. And this is 
uh, more or less 58. And this is less than 60. And therefore we know that this Galois group is, is, uh, is solvable. And uh, then you can prove, once you know this is solvable, you can actually prove, since this is a maximal solvable, with a little bit of group theory, you can actually prove that this must be equal. This must be equal. So it means that, that we actually know the field that, that we get. It is the, the composite of, the, of the, the maximal solvable extension of degree eight and our SL2 F8 extension. And it follows then now, so this is what we know. If I have a, a simple two group scheme and I adjoin its points to Q square root 97, then I uh, get this field here, this field. And this field is the composite of a, of a simple, the Galois group is, is, a, is a simple group, SL2F8, times a solvable group of order eight, a two group. Now, if, if I look at the action on my simple two group scheme, then the solvable, this, this is again, is a two group, it must act trivially. So it means that the Galois action is through SL2F8. If I have a simple two group scheme, the Galois group acts through SL2F8. Now there are two possibilities since the group is simple, it either acts trivially or it acts faithfully. And if it acts trivially, then the group must have order two. And well, that takes care of my, uh, where are they? My, my, my four group schemes of order two, this one, this one, this one, and this one, or it acts faithfully. And then I claim it must be A2. So, but I have not proved that yet. I, I only prove that if I have a simple two group scheme that doesn't have order two, then if I adjoin its points to, my, to the field, I get the same field. And that's not the same. So now what we have to prove in order to prove theorem two and therefore theorem one, that if I have any simple two group scheme and I adjoin its points to, to Q square root 97, I get the same, and I get the same uh, extension that necessarily these two group schemes are isomorphic. So that is theorem three, that if I have, if I know that the fields are the same, then the group schemes are the, are the same. Okay, well, in order to, I, let me briefly say how you prove that, because I do not have that much time anymore. So let's study a little bit the, this extension. So we have this, uh, this SL2F8 extension. Let's look, so we know this extension is only ramified at two and infinity, and it is unramified everywhere else. So the local Galois groups uh, are all unramified except for, for two, the two primes over two. And I claim that the local Galois groups are actually uh, Borel subgroups. So they are upper triangular groups of order uh, seven times eight of order 56. And their inertia subgroups are of this form. They are of order eight. And why is that? Well, Locally, over the over the locally, the, the ring is the, the ring of two adic in, integers over both primes over two, and over such rings, over such local rings, there is always the local local etal exact sequence. So your group scheme has a has a has a connected component, which is a local group scheme. It has only infinitesimal points, and the quotient is an etal group scheme. So you, you always have this. Moreover, in this case, we know that A2 admits uh, action by, by, the, by F8. By, uh, it is an F8 vector space scheme. And by functoriality, the same is then true for the etal part and for the connected part. So we always know, know that. And now the, I claim that both these parts have, have order eight. And why is that? Well, you see, if now I look at the characteristic polynomial, the one that I showed you all the way in the beginning, of the prime over the prime over two, it, it looks like this. And if you substitute one, then you count how many points there are rational over a two, and you you get seventeen. So a two has no rational points over 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 f two. 
But if I uh, now go to a degree seven extension, then you see it is divisible by eight. So that, that means that, that, there are, that this etal part is not trivial. It, it has order at least eight. And in an abelian variety, it also cannot have more than eight elements. So it has precisely eight elements. And therefore this one also has eight elements. So these are group schemes of order eight. And the Galois group acts on it, uh, well, it is compatible with F8. So this is a one dimensional F8 vector uh, space. And the Galois group acts through F8 star, which is a cyclic group of order seven. But Q2, the, the, the two adic numbers, have no extensions of cyclic extensions of degree seven, except the unramified one by local class field theory, if you like. So the action on, on, the, on, on this group is through an unramified character of, of order seven. And it's not order one because it didn't have rational points, modulo two, order seven. And since the determinant is one, then the same is true here. So that, that, that proves that, that we have a Borel group. It, A and D give the action through an unramified character of, uh, of uh, order seven. And the, 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 the B is non-trivial because if, if the B were trivial, then the action were, is unramified on, on A2, but, but it, is not, uh, it is not unramified. So, uh, yeah, that, 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 that shows this. Okay, so, So this I know for A2. For A2 then, yeah, so this is diagonalizable. This is uh, a tal and, and this is diagonalizable by, by duality. Now I prove for an arbitrary simple two group scheme then that this is also the case. So this is already one step towards the, the, the fact that in all simple two group schemes over OF in some sense come, come from this abelian variety. So I claim that over OF, there is always an exact sequence of this type with C etal and M diagonalizable. And a consequence of this is, and this will be important uh, in, the, in the rest of the proof that I, will, uh, that I will skip, is that if I take two elements in the inertia group, then you see tau minus the identity kills C. So if I apply tau minus the identity to G, I end up in M. But on M, the action is also unramified because it is diagonalizable and it is killed by two. Then sigma minus the identity kills M. So I have this, I know this relation that's, that sigma minus the identity times tau minus the identity is always zero on, on, on the points of, a, of an arbitrary simple two group scheme. And this follows essentially from, uh, from, uh, Renault's uh, uh, classification of two group schemes. So, you know, in, in, the, in this group scheme business, you, you know that group schemes are determined by their Galois action if, if the ramification index of the, of the base ring is strictly less than P minus one. And if it is equal to P minus one, you do not know this, but then you know, if you look in Renault's paper, that there, are, there can be at most two group schemes that gives the same Galois module, an etal one and a multiplicative one. And here we are in this situation, P is two and Z2 is unramified, so E is one. And then in fact, there are at most, uh, there are at most two, there is an etal one and a multiplicative one. And therefore the, the G0 must be multiplicative and the, the, the G, yeah, multiplicative means uh, diagonalizable, sorry. Okay, and then here I then I will stop. So I will then prove that at least the Galois modules of an arbitrary simple two group scheme is equal to the Galois module of the two torsion points of the abelian variety. And this you can prove as follows. You know that the action on the, on the points of this simple two group scheme is irreducible because it is simple. Moreover, it is killed by two. So you have a, a representation, an irreducible representation of SL2 F8 with coefficients in F2. Well, those are classified. This is modular 
representation theory and in the paper by Brower and Nesbitt, you can, you can find what they are and they can have dimension uh, up to 12 or something, six, eight and 12, but only one of them satisfies this property that we have just proved. That, that, that the sigma minus the identity times tau minus the identity is zero for sigma and tau in the two seal of subgroup of this, of this SL2 FA. Now note that the two seal of subgroup is precisely this group of upper triangular matrices here. So thanks to that property, you can now prove that, that at least the Gelman modules of these two group schemes uh, are isomorphic. Then you also prove that the group schemes are locally isomorphic over the, over the local rings. And then a general argument of Artin shows that they are in fact uh, isomorphic over, uh, over, the, over the ring itself. And then we are done. Then we have shown that uh, any simple two group scheme over OF that is not of order two is necessarily isomorphic to, uh, to A2. And that proves theorem three and that proves theorem two, and then we have also theorem one. Thank you for your attention.